In this video, I'm going to talk about why the idea of choosing your niche upfront is probably a bad idea and why you should focus on being prolific instead. By being prolific, you'll discover your unique voice and message, which might not be what you expect it to be, and you'll go through a personal transformation experience at the same time. My name is Michael. I'm an energy consultant, a design and technique teacher, online course creator, writer, and now apparently a YouTuber. And this channel is where I figure out how to do this whole YouTube thing. So let's see if my story resonates with you at all. Since my teens, I've harbored a quiet ambition that one day I'd be some kind of creator, that I would make things and share my words and ideas and I'd make a living out of this in some way. But I had no idea how this would work. So I ended up going to university and studying physics and then spent 10 years working in low carbon energy consulting and for a big corporate. I've had plenty of creative projects on the side, but they've mostly failed quietly because I didn't maintain them. In 2019, I took part in an online writing accelerator called Rite of Passage. And one of the key ideas in Rite of Passage is the idea of the personal monopoly, which is, and I'll read this, your unique intersection of skills, interests, and personality traits where you can be known as the best thinker on a topic and open yourself up to the serendipity that makes writing online so special. The personal monopoly idea is basically a more sophisticated take on the idea of a niche, which really appealed to me and felt right somehow. But the personal monopoly idea is where I got stuck because I had a belief that I had to find my, my personal monopoly or my niche before I could start writing, and that held me back. In fact, most of my, my early newsletter editions were me apologizing almost for not having yet found my personal monopoly and my niche. So being a bit all over the place. I hear versions of this all the time now when I see creators who are slightly earlier in the journey than I am, where they think, I can't do my thing until I know what my thing is, right? Well, no, wrong actually. One crucial lesson I've learned over 2020 is that this frame is backwards. You don't need to know your niche up front. Instead, you can be prolific and watch it emerge in front of your eyes. This approach was inspired by my friend Visa, who has the advice to be so prolific that you don't recognize yourself. And this really helped me reframe what was holding me back, which I'll contrast here as the architect and the archeologist. The architect designs the building up front before construction can begin. While construction is going on, the plan may change slightly, but the frame is very much that the plan leads the building. The archaeologist, on the other hand, finds something interesting in the ground and then begins the process of uncovering it. They make some assumptions about what it might be, but then as they discover what the thing actually is, they update their assumption. I've come to realize that most people approach the question of finding their niche like architects. They sit down with a pen and paper, make lists, and try and figure things out up front. I did the same thing. I made endless lists around things I like, things I'm good at, things others like, things others will pay me for, but whatever I came up with from that always felt contrived. If this sounds like you, then I highly recommend you try switching your frame from architect to archaeologist. You found some stones in the road, you don't know what it is yet, but your job is to begin the process of uncovering it. Your job is not to decide up front what it is but to chisel away delicately and repeatedly until the secrets reveal themselves to you. You don't need to know what it is to keep digging. Each time you create something, it's like putting a shovel in the ground, hitting a chisel with a hammer, or brushing away some dirt. Do this enough times and you discover there's a city beneath your feet. It might not be what you expected, but it will be something. This reframe has helped me unlock my own creative potential. I have two newsletters, I've built an audience on Twitter, I have an online course, and now I'm doing this YouTube thing. And the whole time I haven't really known what my niche was. All I've known that there was something there and that I could keep going towards it, but I haven't let the absence of that knowing what my niche is hold me back. The fate I want to avoid as a creator is to force myself into a box I don't like living in. I'd much rather take my time, live with the ambiguity and watch as my niche emerges. And by doing this, I think I'll end up enjoying both the journey and the destination a lot more. And by the way, this doesn't just apply to finding your niche, this applies to finding yourself as well but I'll talk about that another time. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this one where I riff on Timothy Leary's advice to find the others. Instead of trying to find the others, I suggest sharing your unique weirdness and letting the others find you.